inducted into the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame is our second winner, as well as our first inductee from the Channel 10 era of Australian Survivor, Christy Bennett. Now, Christy went into Survivor as a massive super fan of the show, which helped her overcome some initial paranoia and adapt into a very strong social and strategic force out there in Samoa. Christy maneuvered her way throughout season three in an incredibly clever fashion. And despite a couple of attempts to get rid of her, found herself outlasting 22 other players to end up in the final two after one of the most memorable final challenges ever seen in Australian Survivor. And from there, she put on an absolute clinic on how to speak to a Survivor jury in her final Tribal Council performance for the ages, defeating Lee Castledine 8-1 to be crowned the first ever female winner of Australian Survivor, as well as the youngest, a record she still holds until this very day. Now, when it came to the voting, Christy polled very highly with both the fans and expert panel, cementing her legacy in the history books as a true great of Australian Survivor. To accept her induction into the Hall of Fame, it's an absolute pleasure to be joined by Christy right now. Christy, first of all, congratulations on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Oh my gosh, what an intro. Thank you so much. Little Christy is like <laughs> exploding on the inside. Uh, just hearing that gives me chills that I've been able to make such a huge impact on Survivor, which had such a huge impact on me. So thank you so much. <laughs> well, it must be a strange feeling in some ways too, because you're not even 30 yet, Christy, and you're making a Hall of Fame. I mean, I, I don't think this is something you might have ever imagined when you first went out there into Australian Survivor, that this is even possible, yet alone before the age of 30. Yeah, that's very true. Um, it, like the fact that I did it before I well before I turned 30 before my mid 20s um it, in my background of advertising there was this award which was called 30 under 30s and I always wanted to get that so <laughs> it kind of feels like even though I didn't career-wise get that I got that in where my like real passion was in Survivor as a super fan of the show i'm sure you probably remember that day when you found out that channel 10 was bringing back australian survivor because many fans weren't expecting it here it was it's back what how how quickly did it take you to jump online and put in an application and send that tape off yes yeah, so my best friend told me about it because we used to watch it at university and everyone i knew knew that i loved it and been trying to be on it um, and she just said, hey, Christy, um, I've seen that they're applying, taking applicants. And I just, I immediately went on the website. The next day I'd like read all of the questions in the form, you know, filled it out with like blanks just so I could see what they were looking for and wanted. Um, so I knew exactly what they were asking, but I, it took me, I did about two months worth of, like going over it, editing it, filming to make sure there was just the perfect application. And it clearly <laughs> I worked. Just knew that it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, being a super fan when you got out there to Samoa, did you find that was a, a help or a hindrance? Oh, definitely a hindrance at first because it, it like, felt like a big weight of like, it meant so much and it was so important. And I saw that the super fans were getting overwhelmed with everything. Um, so the non-super fans were kind of more relaxed about it, which works with your relationships and how you get to know people and whatnot. But at the end of the day, when you get towards the end of the game, I was like, this is the biggest blessing ever. I know exactly what's going on, uh, how the game's going to progress. What do I need at the end? Um, like I remember Lee asking me like, oh, what's going to happen at Final Tribal? I was like... <laughs> <laughs> you not watch this show? <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the What was the the biggest shock to you? Uh, maybe day one when you're there and you're you're seeing this from a player's perspective compared to watching it on TV. Well, you kind of feel like you should be watching it, so you. I remember we got to the mats and, you know, there's Jonathan and I'm like, oh, my God, that's the host. But then there's this sea of cameras and people. And you're like, I don't remember that on the show. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what's going on? I'm a bit confused. Um, it's, it's just a real shock because you, it feels fake. 
like you're just like am i dreaming am i dreaming and am i dreaming and then you're like this is real this is real this is real and it, again lots of emotions but it, just the coolest thing ever you're just like he's about to say come on in guys <laughs> <laughs> <It's me. laughs> and do you struggle not to call him Jeff then maybe for a few days until you realize it's not Jeff Probst? Oh yeah, uh, for sure. People were calling him Jeff by accident all the time. Like, <laughs> um, I think it was, who was it? Um, oh, my brain's just stopped. Uh, JLP. Oh no. What was it? Um, Evan, we're in the very first challenge. I didn't realize that he was JLP, like Jonathan LaPaglia. And so I thought JLP was Evan. And I was like, JLP, bloody pick that up or something. <laughs> and Evan looked at me like, what are you doing? And I didn't realize until like after the show. And I was like, mm, maybe that's why Evan didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> Another person that I just want a quick little mention because he got a vote from our expert panel in this Hall of Fame is Des. How how do you look back at only a couple of days Des was there, but I need to find out, given that Des got close to being in the Hall of Fame, how does someone like Des compare playing with, with every other player that you play with on that season? Oh my God, Des is in like a whole nother category of person. Like it, literally what you see was Des, like in every way, shape or form. He is really intense, super just like tell him how it is. But honestly, Des was like my first alliance and we were so close. Like he looked after me so well and he like showed me uh, like all these places where I should be looking for idols, you know, if he gets photoed out and just was a rock in that sense. But at the same time, he is a cheeky ass bugger. Like <laughs> he's throwing socks like into the water and everyone was like, where are my socks? And he'd come <laughs> over and tell me what he'd done. He was, you know, the definition of like a villain <laughs> in that way. Like, <laughs> He, he is a survivor villain. <laughs> Maybe you might but be able to use your powers so in the great. Hall of Fame to influence voters next year that he can get a place in here next year, potentially. Oh, he's iconic. Like, to be the first voted out and be the person that I get asked about almost the most, <laughs> like, man, doesn't get any better. Everyone's worst fear turned into a huge asset for him. Indeed. I always say that the two best clubs to be part of in Survivor are either the Winners Club or the First Boot Club. So you can <laughs> cle clearly see where that's going through. I mentioned in the introduction, uh, Chrissy, I mean, your final trouble performance is arguably the best we've ever seen really in the history of Australian Survivor. Do you remember that moment stepping into that final trouble, sitting down, staring at the jury? What was going through your mind just at that very point? For sure. It was just utter clarity. Just you know when your mind just makes space and you just know that whatever you say is going to come out right it was like that I was like now's the time you're going to put it on the line you're ready for this you can do it I had no doubt no sense of uncertainty in my own capabilities but I also knew that I was going to let the jury make their own decision. I was just going to give them what they needed to make that decision. I think that made a big difference in how the um, how I delivered my messages. Now, be honest with me, Chrissy. How many times did you practice that in front of the mirror over the years? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I have been writing that since I was eight. Every <laughs> single season, every single episode, that's an amazing move. That's an amazing characteristic. That's a great player. That's what I would want to say. Why hasn't this player said this at final tribal council? What would I want to hear? <laughs> People say, you know, where did that come from? I was slowly writing it the whole game. After every tribal council, I would go and think, what about this tribal council would I want to say at the end? What about this move? What about this vote out? What about this situation am I going to say at the end? So I had it written by the time I got there. 
What what means more to you, uh, being the first ever female winner of Australian Survivor or the youngest winner of Australian Survivor? I think the youngest is pretty awesome. Like, um, but although like I'm not so worried about it in age respects, like what an honor, but I just happened to be that age when I went on there and got it, you know, I was just waiting for that opportunity. Um, and that's when it happened for me. But, you know, say if Sue had won, I would be like, bloody hell, that's a way bigger achievement if you're in your 60s and you win. Like, I look at Bob and I think, you know, yeah. like, there's so much more they have to physically deal with um, than someone my age. Which a couple of years later, of course, when, when Shane wins it sort of at her age, of course, it's sort of, you know, Channel 10 has really brought that extremes, hasn't it? The youngest and the oldest. It's been sort of a real parallel in the seasons. Yeah, that was insane. Like, I was like, good on her. And the thing is, it's a great example of you don't have to be the fittest. You don't have to be the physically strongest. It's about leveraging what you have control over and what your skills are and bringing that and leveraging that because people think that you need to have this to win survivor but it's really about leveraging whatever you've got it's been nearly five years of course since you played and, and won survivor christy what have, what have you been up to since and, and how's life treating you in 2020 wow it really does at the same time it's it sounds so long ago and it feels so long ago, but at the same time, I can remember everything. Like I was at the beach yesterday. <laughs> um, everything is still so vivid. Uh, what have I been up to? I bought my camper van and I was driving around Australia, which was incredible. Uh, I went over to the U S to watch, uh, the millennials versus Gen X and had the honor of, you know, getting immersed in super fan mode. Um, and making friends with other castaways, which was such, such an honor. Um, and then I've moved over to Auckland in New Zealand about two years ago, and I've been living here since. So that, that takes up like the four and a half, five years. And keeping busy. <laughs> that's, that's the main thing, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. More about pursuing my passions rather than, you know, getting stuck behind a desk job. <laughs> Not Indeed. that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm, you know, my my priorities got realigned afterwards. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Christy, it's it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to chat with you and to induct you into the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame. On behalf of everyone on both the expert panel as well as the fans who voted, many congratulations. We do have an award. I'm going to hold this up to the camera. We will ship this off to you. Oh, uh, can't present that to you in person, but uh, in this day and age we live in, we'll get that off to you uh, very, very shortly. But uh, once again, congratulations on your induction here into the Hall of Fame. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Ben. I am so honored to be a part of the Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for creating this amazing community and a record of everything that goes on in Survivor. There are so many universal lessons that can go on forever and people like you get more people involved and understand why people are so passionate and love it. So thank you so much for doing that.